Good morning, everyone. My name is Kieran McManus. I'm a member of the Brazilian American Chamber of Commerce and a partner in PwC here in Sao Paulo. On behalf of the Chamber, I welcome you and thank you for joining us. I couldn't be more happy than happier uh, than today to make sure that the Chamber is engaged on something completely different that we never done before, that is really to support an initiative that started in Brazil, um, the MBI, as Fernando will explain, uh, to fight pediatric cancer. And I think this initiative is something that is uh, uh, very innovative uh, in its essence because it's, it's coming with funding from Brazil to different labs and different institutions in US. And I think it will uh, eventually bring the trial not only to US, but to Brazil as well. Okay, thank you, Kira. Thank you, Simone, for the kind words. And thank you again for the opportunity uh, to be here today. Uh, I chose this word that kids with brain tumors were left behind because the, the treatment for medulloblastoma that is, is there today, the treatment is 35 or more than 30 years old. So when the treatment for medulloblastoma was created and, and one of the persons who created this protocol uh, was Dr. Packer that is here with us back then. So the treatment was created when 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 we were using this kind of technologies and 30% uh, of the kids as i mentioned before they are not cured and and they are going to die and 70% of the kids they are going to have uh, severe co uh, lifelong collateral effects like growing problems uh, cognitive problems or even secondary tumors so th there is a problem uh, uh, about how society is dealing with this kind of uh, rare diseases. And, and it's 30,000 30, of kids every year in the world that have medulloblastoma. And, and you can imagine 35 years with the same protocol, it's, uh, it's, it's not acceptable. Uh, we have, uh, in green, we have the, the medulloblastoma initiative, which is a team of people in Brazil that is making the fundraising and, and the awareness raising uh, about the, the initiative. Then uh, the children's, all the money we, we collect, we send to the Children's National, who, 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 where Dr. Packer is, and who is doing all the scientific coordination among the, the, the 13, labor, 13 uh, institutions that, uh, that are working in, in this in the science for, for our project. And and then the in black is the consortium uh, itself with these 13 labs. It's 10 in, in the US, uh, two in in Canada and one in Germany. So yeah. what what makes our project unique? Uh, it's uh, I'm going to I'm I'm going to to explain because uh, I have uh, I have learned in these two years and a half that I am involved in this in this uh, field, and and I think I can say that that MBI is really a unique project. Maybe there is no project like this in the world. It's very very different. Uh, first of all, is the flow of funds. So normally, the developed countries send money to to the to the undeveloped or or countries that are not as rich. Normally, the money comes from the north to the south, right? And in, in our case, so far, the money is, is, is coming from, from Brazil to, to the US. Another thing that is very important is, is that we have a specific target. There, there are lots of uh, initiatives out there that are collecting money for for cancer, for pediatric cancer, we are specifically raising or targeting one disease, medulloblastoma. And even though uh, we, we are even more focused because there are, they are, as I said, there are other institutions or other foundations out there that collect money for a specific disease, but they do in another way. They they, they give scattered grants. They give, the, the scientists apply for their grants and they give scattered grants. And at the end of the day, 
they did a very nice job, but actually they maybe they didn't find the cure because they give one grant here, one grant there, and we we don't. We fund only these 13 labs. So we are very, very focused. And for me, that's that's why we are uh, we, we are being able to to make uh, such a, an amazing pro progress in two and a half years. So of course, the most important thing, the, the awareness is important, the money is important, but the most important thing is is the science, is the progress of our research. I will leave this part to Dr. Packer, but we we have uh, four, maybe five clinical trials in our pipeline and two. Are going to be protocol are going to be uh, submitted to FDA in, in January. So the others are going to take a little bit longer. I, I will I will I will finish with with our ult, uh, ultimate objective just to make a wrap up of my presentation. So of course save thousands of lives. Uh, as I mentioned, av avoid. We are not focused only in the kids who die, but 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 in the kids that are submitted to this radiation and and very toxic chemotherapy. So if we find a better treatment, we are going to avoid these lifelong collateral effects to these kids. Uh, raise awareness about the lack of research, and maybe we are going to help other diseases that that are not. And are not being funded as medulloblastoma. And one, one thing that it's, which is, I think is very important, it's a benchmark for other families who could, could do the same and, make, and maybe make a difference uh, fighting, fighting, fighting other diseases. Yes, uh, my, my family's commitment with the fight, fight against cancer comes from a long time. Uh, my sister's twin son uh, survived a rare and very aggressive type of leukemia. Uh, the doctors gave him a uh, five chance, five percent uh, chance of survival. But he was uh, fortunately uh, success, successfully treated in, in Providence, Rhode Island, uh, and was able to graduate from Brown University. And uh, his ordeal uh, traumatized the whole family. Uh, and uh, prompt, us, prompt us to uh, go after good projects to support uh, in this field. Uh, three years ago, my ex-wife had a kidney removed to treat a very aggressive uh, tumor in the ureter. And, uh, and also, fortunately, she's doing great. Uh, my sister-in-law also has a very tragic uh, family story uh, of many relatives lost to cancer, uh, including her father. So when uh, when Fernando presented me the medulla blastoma initiative, it wasn't uh, difficult uh, for me and my family to make the decision to join this effort. Uh, I, I've known Fernando and his family for decades. Uh, the Goldstein family is a is a very successful case in the in the real estate uh, industry in our city. Uh, is very active in helping our communities. Our reassurances that uh, the technical and the governance requirements are in place, and 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 the work will be carried out uh, uh, in the best possible way. Uh, the other reason uh, we joined MBI is Fernando's passionate determination uh, to find a cure for this disease. His, his commitment to the project is contagious and uh, worthy of, of our support. Uh, another aspect that is that was relevant uh, to, in our decision making is worth uh, mentioning is that in Brazil, there are no incentives for such initiatives at all. Uh, it, it, it's extremely difficult to raise funds for this research in Brazil. Uh, I uh, empathize with uh, Fernando's difficulties uh, in, in raising funds in this context. 
and and I and I hope I I do hope that my family's gesture uh, resonates and uh, and other supporters will follow uh, our our lead and uh, and finally as as I, I mentioned already uh, I would point out that uh, MBA in, MBI is a rare case of cross border cooperation led by a Brazilian citizen. Uh, to find a solution that will impact the lives of uncountable children and families, and uh, uh, that we are very proud to be part of. Uh, well, uh, good morning, everybody. And I became a bureaucrat. And uh, by became a bureaucrat, I lost this sense that we have in the, uh, the private sector life of having results uh, in the short uh, term of our activity. Uh, I've been a career diplomat since 1991, and I got used to the long cycles of diplomacy. Uh, you will start a negotiation in the year, I don't know, uh, 2005, and you are going to have the result in 2030. Uh, and it's especially uh, the case uh, when you are dealing with patents, pharmaceutical patents, and access to health. All the cycles are very long. All the cycles are, are very long. International uh, negotiations, they always take long time to be concluded. And the result of the negotiations take long time to be perceived as a public good uh, for, uh, for the society. Um, it's especially the case when you are one experience that I had, which was dealing with the better access to HIV uh, treatments. Uh, it was um, a hard work because we had to to to, to make people understand that a a fair and equitable system of patents was the best interest of society. And we had some different views in, the, our, in our relationship with uh, countries like uh, the United States. Huh? But uh, uh, with time, we, we, we could uh, show that uh, there is a one interest, which is public health, that uh, should prevail over trade and over commerce and over private interests. So uh, we, in a sense, had the opportunity to, to, to take advantage of the political position that uh, Washington has in the world to, to, to convince people that something is important. Uh, Washington is still a, a, a capital, a political capital of the the, the world, uh, and uh, we have this kind of uh, resonance, I say resonance, of uh, of ideas. If something is happening in Washington, people will pay attention to that. And uh, the things that I, I I would mention about the initiative, which are very different from any other initiative that I participated uh, or in any other kind of experience is that it produces concrete results in short term. It's focused and uh, it's novel. <laughs> and uh, uh, Fernando had the ability to bring together the best of science to this, uh, to this uh, initiative. Uh, the consortium that he, he managed to get together is, is really amazing. I, I think we have uh, 14 uh, research uh, institutes working together. And, and uh, maybe just one point here, because you mentioned that normally the projects that you're involved in, they take many years and they, and they take a long mm -hmm. time. And y you mentioned that the, um, the, and the difference in terms of speed but maybe the other thing is that in these initiatives that take a long time, I imagine that you spend a lot of money on these. They spend a lot of money yeah. working on, on things. Whereas on this on this one, you know, the, the like money is being spent, 
probably maybe not as much money as on, mm -hmm. on other longer term initiatives, but it, it's it's a like a little money is going very fast and going a long yeah. way, mm -hmm. like uh, comparatively. So 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 maybe like in in terms of the return that's that's being got from the money being invested, it, it's a very it's a very high value return if you like because it's mm -hmm. a very lot a, a lot of return for a very short you know yeah. short and, and relatively small in, investment. Yeah, and you know we in in the public uh, public uh, sector you have faced situations which are. Uh, Shameful. Uh, when I was president of the, the PTO, the Brazilian PTO, we uh, found that we had a situation because of the, the malfunction of the institute uh, or the PTO, uh, we, we were spending 9 million, uh, 9 billion reais a year uh, on on the payment of royalties of patents, which were already uh, in public domain in any other country. Well, uh, it, it was uh, because one paragraph in one article of the Brazilian patent law that uh, it was uh, 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 happening. And it was amazing to see 9 billion reais, it would be $2 billion, $2 billion more or less, a year that Brazil was spending on extended patents just in the public health. And uh, it was the year uh, 2013 and 14 when, when I was in the, in the Brazilian PTO. And then I started talking about this question. And finally, another, another, again, long cycle. I started talking about that in 2013 and 14, and in 2021, seven, eight years after we started talking about that, uh, the Brazilian uh, Supreme Court decided that it was unconstitutional to pay and to have this extended patent system uh, which derived from the, the malfunction of the Brazilian PTO. So uh, imagine what we could have done with nine, uh, $2 billion a year. Uh, we, we were talking about uh, uh, the Brazilian patent law was approved in, in 1996. So uh, 30 years, we, we are talking about uh, 40, 50 billion. <laughs> We could <laughs> have been invested in, in, in research development for, for the, the good of people. Sure. Uh, good morning. Um, first of all, I really want to thank everyone who's made this uh, call possible, the Brazilian American Chamber of Commerce. Um, of all childhood cancers, childhood brain tumors are the ones still with the worst outcomes and the highest side effects of all childhood brain tumors, and Fernando laid out the numbers internationally, the one most aggressive one, and the one of the embryonal tumors, the most common, is medulloblastoma. We've made really great strides in managing a medulloblastoma. Fernando talked about protocols we put together three decades ago, but the real incrimination of, for the field is we have not replaced those protocols with more effective ones, with more safe ones. And for subgroups of children with this disease that have a different biology, once the tumor comes back, there's almost a 100% mortality rate within three years. So those are the odds we're fighting. So we have children who are losing their lives with therapies that are ineffective or only partially effective. And we have to change the paradigm. We have to change the approach. The normal scientific approach is, as I think some people on this call know from the comments, is the labs do their work. After a few years, the work funnels up to where it might be usable clinically. We do preclinical testing in animal models another three to four years, develop the drugs, and then go into clinical trials. So the process can extend out 
10 to 15 years. The, the question is, could we put together a consortium of laboratories that would not compete for dollars, but would work together for dollars, take their labs that were already sophisticated, working on other facets of childhood brain tumors, even other facets of medulloblastoma, and with the support, direct their efforts to group four medulloblastoma, especially those children who develop recurrence, and can we do parallel play? Can we do the research, the preclinical testing, and then within a finite period of time, not five years, not 10 years, not unfortunately one year, but in a two year or so period, could we deliver protocols that were different, approaches that were different, that would have a possibility of curing more children? And the, the currency of joining the consortium was you had to, the, the labs had to sign off on that vision. They may be labs that are used to five to 10 year plans. They were all well-funded labs nationally and internationally, but they've never had this kind of timeline to work with. And actually it sort of um, energized the scientists because this was something that could be finite, that they could move quickly from their lab to a clinical protocol and they could see tangibly their work moving ahead. Now, the other thing we made very clear to all of the scientists involved is that everybody's lab work is gonna move forward. It's wonderful lab work, but it may not be pertinent to get us to a cure or a new approach faster. So we're always pruning. The choice of these labs were very, was a little bit arbitrary. I've been in the field a long time. What are the best labs? Not at my institution. We have some fine labs only, but what's the best lab nationally and internationally? That's why some of the major labs are not in the United States. They're in Canada, they're in Germany. These, because we knew we were group, getting a group of people who could work together who would focus on the problem, that would use the best science to give us our best option. It may not be perfect, but it'll be our best option in two years to try to save more children. And then we would take the year after that to refine it, and the year after that to refine it. And we couldn't wait for perfection. And the exciting thing is that we're pretty close to our timeline. Getting a new vaccine immunotherapy approach to the FDA in a two and a half year period from idea to from conception to delivery is pretty unheard of. Getting and and getting in, in, and hopefully now personalized therapies right after that is fairly unheard of. And are they going to be successful? God, we hope so. We want them to, but we've got to try and we've got to do this in the best way possible. Yeah, uh, I, I guess just on that note, we have a question here from from Ron Chester uh, asking, um, do you have any major pharmaceutical company as partner to help accelerate the next step, such as clinical development? No, I, I think that's a great question. And um, the, you know, pharmaceutical companies are, can be very difficult to move. But in my experience, uh, bringing a, a quite a few drugs to clinical work, if you can give them a real reason, uh, not only financial, but in many cases, especially for orphan diseases like medulloblastoma, to make a real difference, they will jump aboard. The present therapies that we are looking at, the immunotherapies, are really not made by pharmaceutical companies. They're made by university consortiums that have manufacturing facilities. We have one in Washington, D.C. We're working in with one, the largest immunotherapy program, probably for brain tumors in the world, out of the group at, at the University of Florida, Dr. Mitchell. So we have areas that could, could um could manufacture. As we get into more personalized therapies, I'm sure we are going to have to work with drug companies, but they have a stable of drugs that are potentially available if we can show the rationale of why it would be critical to use them. 
So we often think of the pharmaceutical companies as an evil, and sometimes they're a necessary evil, but at other times, they can be your ally if you work with them creatively. So at this point, the studies are coming from uh, for immunotherapy, but as you get into personalized therapy, I am sure we're going to have to rely on the on the credibility we built over decades with different pharmaceutical houses to try to get them to give us our drug or allow us to use their drug for these diseases. Yes, uh, actually, uh, I, I, I would never imagine two years and a half ago when we started, to, and when I and Dr. Parker started talking about what could be done if I if I if I made a donation, what could be done to maybe try to speed up the science towards the cure of this disease? So I, I would never imagine that two years and a half we would be in this position uh, with the clinical trials around the corner. So it's it, it's amazing. But but I mean uh, we have to keep going because. We, we might not hit the target in the first in the first trial. We, we have, as as Dr. Parker said, or or we might hit the target, but we have to improve and improve. So so the, the challenge is still there. And and my goal is it's it's raising money for the project. We have 13 labs, and we we are keep working uh, in this process of raising funds, and we are trying to do now in the U.S. Uh, and and I think, as I mentioned in the beginning, I think we we could also not only find the cure of this disease, which is which, which would be wonderful, but we we hope to inspire other people to do the same because that 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 the, the world needs more philanthropy. That there are lots of money just 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 there in the bank, and 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 people people need to do. More philanthropy. Brazil does not have a big tradition in philanthropy, so we we had a hard time at the beginning, but but we 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 were able to succeed, and we will keep going. That's fantastic, and I, I guess with that we we'll come to the end here of, of our event. So thank you very much, everyone, everyone for participating, uh, and. And as it was recorded, so so it'll be available for for others in, in the future. Thank you very much for for everybody.